straight to quarters. Run out the guns. Stand by the starboard battery. One broadside into it, if you please, Captain Bush. Pointers on target. Blind stops ready. Aye, aye, sir. Ready. Fire! <laughs> Michael Redgrave as C.S. Forrester's indomitable man of the sea, Horatio Hornblower. intended. Would she finally resist Napoleon, come openly into the war as our ally, or would she play for time and try to appease him as she had done before? I had my old friend Captain Bush to dinner in my cabin on the Nonsuch, because I knew he liked sea pie, and my man Brown had prepared one for me with special care. And then, regrettably, I, I couldn't talk of anything but my impatience. Well, there must be some news after all. Why don't we hear? I simply can't understand it, Bush. We will, we will. It's scarcely a month, you know, since we left Russia. A month, sir. If I'd known it would be that long, do you think I'd have let Witchwood keep the cutter clam at Kronstadt? Excellent sea pie, Horatio. Excellent. Mm, you see, Bush, it's... it's the, what is the... the first I ever ate aboard the old Renown, remember? Hmm. Brown prepared it himself, eh? Yes. Stop trying to distract me, will you, Bush? It isn't clever. I, I tell you this. If we're to sit here in the Baltic twiddling our thumbs, we'll have to organize something to keep the men's minds busy. A hornpipe competition or, well, even theatricals, perhaps. <laughs> theatricals? You can't be serious, Horatio. Well, why not? This lack of action is extremely bad for morale, Bush. And what's wrong with theatricals, anyway? Don't forget you, you were young yourself once. Well, you know, I can remember... When... Yes? Come in. Ah, midshipman Gerard. Well, Mr. Gerard? I'll cut a clam inside the window, sir. No. Yes, sir. At least, at least Mr. Holmes has told me to report her, sir. Well, at, don't at let me dissuade you, Gerard. Your news is excellent. How far off is she? How up to window, sir? We're running down to her. And, and let me see. Clam signals have dispatches for Commodore, sir. Well, are you sure? Why, well, yes, sir. I, at least that's what I... All right, all right. Don't stammer. Always make sure you know your own mind, Mr. Gerard. Now, tell Mr. Hurst to make Commodore to Clam send dispatches on board as soon as practicable. And, uh, uh, well, bring the dispatches here immediately they come on board. All understood, Mr. Gerard? Yes, sir. Uh, I, I mean, uh, aye, aye, sir. Oh, <laughs> not going up yourself, sir? No, I shall sit right down again and have some more sea pie. Help yourself, Bush, help yourself. Yes. No, I, I am not going to run up there and stand gawking over the side like some midshipman... Hmm. They must be feeling some suspense about Russia back home these days. It's no more than in this cabin at the moment. Bush, if Bonaparte's main strength could be tied up here in the east this summer, give Wellington the chance to strike hard in the south, it's our great opportunity, perhaps our last. Oh, well, well, well. 
We'll know soon enough now, won't we, Bush? Stop worrying. After all, Tsar Alexander did send that stiff reply to Bernie's demands. At least that's what Lord Witchwood said the day we left Kronstadt. You tell me so yourself. Stiff reply one day may mean soft words the next, says Alexander. Oh, hopelessly unpredictable, these Russians. Are... Come in. Well, Mr. Gerard, what's the latest? Witchwood. Well, by all the... You came yourself, did you? I did indeed, Sir Horatio. Ah, by your ship, Clam. Uh -huh. I wait till you hear the news. You will yes. agree my trip was warranted. Well, come on, then. Well, Captain Bush... Quite like old times, the more than answer. Well, yes. Which would, which would, don't keep us waiting for your news. Commodore, it's war. War. It's settled then. No more procrastination? We're no longer alone, Hornblower. Now, wait till you plow through this dispatch case. Ten days ago, Bonaparte crossed the Neiman with 15 army corps. Uh -huh. He's committed to invasion now. He can't turn back. Invasion. And. And can Russia hold out, which would? <laughs> I wish I knew. But at least he'll have his summer's work cut out for him, which means that we can push ahead in space. Yes. Well, good news, oh, eh? Oh, it's the finest news I've heard in years, Witchwood. Uh, uh, sit down, sit down here. Here, give me that dispatch case uh, and your cloak. Here. Have, have some sea pie, have some wine. Ha, 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 yours is a welcome face, Bush. Bush, you can forget the theatricals. Now we can get on with the war. had much to tell that afternoon. But I must say, for once, the man made highly satisfactory listening. Then there was the dispatch addressed to me by Lord Cathcart, our British ambassador in Russia. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. A few polite formalities, and then... Uh, ah, ah, listen to this, Bush. You will, of course, render all the assistance in your power to our new ally, Russia. The main body of Bonaparte's army is already marching on Moscow... But I am informed that some 60,000 men under the Duke of Tarentum are now on, on the northern route to St. Petersburg. The Russian Imperial Staff Agency requires your squadron's assistance at Riga, which, of course, the French must capture before they can move on towards St. Petersburg. Riga? There's a fine harbor there, sir. Yeah. The city's only a short distance up the river from the Gulf. Yes, I know, Bush, yes. The ambassador's tone is urgent, to say the least, which would hmm? uh, With reason, Commodore. Frankly, there's a panic at the Russian court, uh -huh. and Riga is a vital spot, as well as vulnerable. Mm. Cathcart goes on to ask that I detach the cutter clam, dispatch her back to England with the news. Mm, yes. I don't like losing her. Oh, well, we mustn't delay. Well, no doubt you wish to go with her, Lord Witchwood. Oh, naturally. When duty calls and all that, you know, well, Hornblower. I must ask you to wait while I complete my own dispatches for the Admiralty, and, and uh, oh, yes, a, a brief letter to my wife. Mm. Yes, they won't take long. Of course. Uh, Captain Bush, I suggest you tell the men that this is their chance to ride home, too. Oh, and one other thing, Witchwood. I shall send my secretary, Mr. Sorger, back to England in your charge to be tried by court-martial. I'll give you all the papers relating to his case. Very good, Commodore. I envy you, you know, Witchwood. Oh, yes, a glimpse of England at this time. <laughs> Heaven alone knows when the rest of us will see it. <laughs> By day, as we bore on, a brassy sun blazed hotter, and the breezes almost died. Barely enough wind stirred to carry us, even with all our canvas set. It was a full eight days before we finally crept into the Bay of Vega, and night was falling as I stared out through my glass at this new shore. That's no man's land between the two forces, I imagine. Well, if the Russians weren't still holding the village, there'd be no fires. Our puzzle so far solved at all events. <laughs> Two fathoms, sir. Two fathoms. I'd like to bear up. Very good. Carry on. Oh, well, the moon's rising. Hold her hand. On the port bow, sir. She's pulling off. We have to catch that boat if we can, man. Aye, aye, sir. Starboard, two points. Clear away the gate. Don't shout, please, man. Perhaps they haven't seen us yet. Right, sir. Boat's crew, stand by. Whoever they are, man, they've not much skill. They should have headed for shoal water. Oars against sail with no races. We need prisoners for information. I'm hoping that boat holds the proper answers. Ahoy there, boat! Ease oars! Yes, 
There's your pistol. <clears throat> I don't suppose I need to shoot again. I wonder if those fellows who... <coughs> well, rather a noisy night for our first visit, hmm? We got them, sir! Excellent. They're Frenchies, sir. We got them all. Two officers, three men. <laughs> As the five prisoners were thrust up over the Harvey's side, I saw the star of the Legion of Honor glittering on the chest of one young officer. He would be their leader, I concluded. I would like to know monsieur's name and rank, please. You see, Chief de Bataillon du Corps du Génie des Armées de l'Empereur. Mm, Major of Engineers, a good catch, Mount. You understand some English, I gather, sir. Are we, Emperor? My mind was busy with the problem of how I could induce him to supply me with some facts that I sorely needed. And I, I had an idea. I much regret the necessity of taking you prisoners home, especially at the start of such a promising campaign, but possibly I can arrange an exchange at an early date. Ah. In case Monsieur has friends with whom he might like me to communicate, I shall do so at my first opportunity. Yes. Marshal Midon du Cotarentum would be very glad to hear. Ah. I am on his staff. Well, well, oh, commander in chief staff. Ah, well, then you must be you must be chief engineer. Oh, yes, you are important. Oh, that's too bad. After all, you had no reason to suspect a British squadron in this bay. None whatever. We had been told the contrary. That these Russian villages are blockaded. Mm, they've been supplying you with information, then. Mm. Oh, well, all Russians are quite useless, are they not? I suppose your emperor has met with very little opposition from the Russians. Oh, we have taken Smolensk, and the emperor himself marches on Moscow. Oh, Our divisions will soon occupy St. Petersburg. Indeed. Mm. But uh, possibly the Dwina River may become an obstacle. Riga, too, stands in your path. Oh, not for long. Just one bold push across the river mouth, and the Russians will dissolve the moment we have turned their flag. So that's what he'd been up to when we nabbed him, reconnoitering for a good place to land French forces across the mouth of the Duino. Mm. A daring move, sir, worthy of all the great traditions of the French army. Ah, uh, you. Of course, you have to cross the river before your operations can proceed. Uh, no doubt you have sufficient landing craft for your forces. Problems like that do not hold us, monsieur. Uh -huh. We have barges, a score of them. Uh -huh. Seize that Mittau before these stupid Russians could destroy oh, them. Oh, indeed. Uh, but, of course, the, the Russians still hold both sides of the river. Well, for the moment. Uh -huh. They hold on to our side, the western side, by nothing but their fingernails, however. Why, we... But do not think me fool enough to reveal military information, sir. No chance of wheedling anything more from the cocky young major for the present. But at least I'd learned about those captured barges and that they planned an attack soon directly across the river's mouth. Oh, uh, Russians are always incompetent, isn't it so, Major? A prompt assault on your part is, of course, it's a clever plan, allowing them no chance of digging in. But you will pardon me now, sir, if I attend to my duties? Hmm? We'll return to the squadron, Mr. Bond, if you please. <laughs> Armed with that tidy bit of information, I slept better than I'd hoped that night in, in an alien harbor. No doubt the Russians here at Riga were all confirmed landlubbers. But I could be counted on. I felt to cope with this type of problem. I, I was even gratified, in fact, that the French were not discounting good sea water in their plans. The next morning in my cabin, I had a conference with all six captains of my squadron. Well, it's quite clear then, gentlemen. The Russians still hold both river banks, the western one precariously. The French must cross that river if they're to surround Riga. When they try it, we shall bag as many barges as we can. Uh, yes, we will. We'll carry out the patrol I've outlined each evening at sundown. The French will scarcely attempt such a barefaced plan by daylight. Now, <clears throat> are there any questions? You, uh, you said, I think, sir, that my sloop Raven would hold one end of the defense line. Quite correct, Mr. Cole. You'll anchor each night on the very edge of the shoals to westward, the French side. It's your light draft that dictates that position. Mr. Vickery and Lotus guard the other riverbank. All right, sir. The rest of us hold stations in between, and armed small boats will row guard at the mouth. Are your stations understood? All right, sir. All right, sir. And that will be all for the moment, gentlemen. <laughs> Oh, one last word, please. Yes. Captain Cole spoke of our defense line, yet it's not so much a defense as a, as a trap. 
Let them thrust their heads well into the noose before any alarm is given. Otherwise, we'll simply scare them off. Very well, gentlemen. Thank you for your attendance. At dusk, my gig conveyed me up the yellow Duina River, past the village at the mouth to the bustling wharves of Riga. There the governor met me amid a crowd of other dignitaries. By their demeanor, you would never guess they lived in a besieged city. My coxswain Brown was in charge of my boat's crew, and I told him to wait there for my return. But I soon realized it would be difficult to have a private talk with General Esnoff. Commodore, may I present the Intendant of Livonia, Count Canary, and the Countess. They, too, are recently arrived at Riga. Why, well, yes, I, I, I know the Countess. We uh, <clears throat> we met at the Tsar's court. <laughs> Another Russian dinner, Commodore? Do you feel you are equal to it this time? Well, I'm learning, Countess. At least I shan't give my whole attention to the, to the order. Uh, Commodore! Uh, sir, Brown. Is that you? What's that racket? Uh, must be French barges. Uh, at the river, sir. And our patrol's resisting them. Is our gig's crew at the wharf? Ready. I'm waiting for you, sir. Oh, come on, then, Brian. What are we waiting for? Is that you, Cole? Come alongside, please. Aye, aye, sir. Oh, quite an eventful night. But their barges didn't get across, sir. Most of them put back. Put back? What caused them to? I was the one sent up the alarm rocket, sir. What? Just as you planned. Then all hands fell in small boats pulled for the river here. The French... Mr. Was... Cole, you sent up that rocket the moment you saw them? Why, yes, sir, certainly. Cole, you Oh, oh, well, it's, it's too late now. And only where boats are approaching, sir. Long as he's got the right way. At your orders. Aye, aye, sir. Bring her alongside the Commodore, men. I thought I saw you, sir. Things aren't as bad as they might be. All right, you, Mr. Curl. We bagged five barges on our side, sir. Cut them off before they could get back to their own shore. Why, Vickery, that's more like it. How many prisoners? Well, I should say nearly a thousand, sir. Roughly ah. 200 Frenchmen to a barge. The rest turned back at the alarm. some disappointment. I'd hoped for a catch of at least a dozen barges, perhaps 2,500 men. And yet, it was my own fault, too. Who else placed coal in its key position? At all events, thanks to young Vickery, we'd headed off the crossing for that night. Strange people, Russians. That interminable ballet was still going on as I entered the opera house. <laughs> I speak to you, please. Shh. Oh, see you, Commodore. Will you come outside the box a moment, please? Commodore, where have you been? The parlor has been beauty. Uh, that was a slight um, distraction, sir. Mm. The Navy's job, of course. I, I regret I had to leave without advising you. The French were attempting to cross the river mouth in barges. And we managed... Uh, how can we thank you enough, sir? You have struck a valiant blow for Mother Russia. Thank you, General. I feel I ought to warn you, though, they're sure to try this plan again, and if they do, we'll... Of course, of course, we must talk of all these. But now you must come back into the box. You miss so much of this gala night. Oh, sir, look, it's, it's late, you oh, know, and I... But I, I think... insist. Oh, come on, talk. The ballet has been so beautiful. Come, come. Thank you. Oh, you first, General. No doubt the war can wait another evening. Horatio Hornblower, starring Michael Redgrave, is based on the novels by C.S. Forrester. 
Music composed and conducted by Sidney Torch. Produced by Harry Allen Towers.